Hey, what's up guys? JC here, and this is how you get your flight controller to connect to Betaflight, CleanFlight, BaseFlight, iNav, any of those. The only one this does not apply to is going to be RaceFlight. They do things a little bit different, at least at the time of me recording this video. Now, if you're watching this in the future, they might change things. Uh, they, they've been talking about changing it to where it would be easier, but as of right now, it does not work. If they don't ever fix it, then I will do a separate video just for you guys. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is go to Betaflight or CleanFlight, either one, and if you have a board that uses a CP2102 driver or 2104 chip set on the board, then you need this driver here. If your flight controller uses a virtual COM port, then you need this driver here. Well, let me explain. If my mouse stops working at any point, like if it's already not working, then uh, I apologize for that. Hopefully you see my mouse right now. Look at latest CP2100X STM USB VCP driver. If you don't know which one your flight controller uses, just download both and install both. And you also want to install Zadig. I'll be covering three different flight controllers. The uh, CP2100X boards, a F3 virtual COM port board, and a F4 virtual COM port board. Uh, because things are a little bit different between all three. If you don't know which one your board has, a few different ways of knowing is one, you can uh, look on your where you purchased it from, sometimes they say there. Uh, two, if you look on your board and see a little chip that says CP2104, then that means you have the CP2100X driver. If your USB is tied in to UART number one, then that's also a CP2100X board. And I know you can't see right now, but if you were to go into the ports tab and you only have three UARTs, then that's a CP2100X board. If you have three UARTs plus a virtual COM port port, then that's a uh, VCP board. So like I said, I'll be doing all three different types. First, I will plug in a board that uses the CP2102 driver. This is going to be like the X Racer, the Nace32, the Dodo, and others like that. So I have rearranged the drivers on all three of these boards so that it will not connect, just to prove to you that uh, this does work. So it's not connecting. First we want to go, uh, let's open up the device manager. And I'm using a Windows 10 computer, so I just type it in here and it pops up there. Another way of doing it is right clicking your start button. You also have device manager here. If you have a Windows 7 or older computer, then I'm not sure how you would do it. You might have to Google how to open it up. But once you get here, you want to click on View and then Show Hidden Devices. And let's open up Ports, Common LPT, and uh, Universal Serial Bus Devices. Ideally, what you want is whenever you just plug in your USB cable, and this goes for all three boards, you want the flight controller to show up under ports common LPT because it needs a COM number. And if you click on a bunch of these tabs, you'll see many of these are grayed out, but then many of these have uh, an icon lit up next to it. And if you're not sure which one your flight controller is currently on, then here's the easy way to fix that and find it. Uh, we will just go into Zadig and then click options, list all devices, and then click this drop down box and find your flight controller. Uh, yours might be called something different. Mine is CP2102, but yours might be, like I said, it might be something else. You just use process of elimination to figure out which one it is. So I would say, well, I know it's not my USB receivers. I know it's not my microphone. I know it's not my mouse. So that only leaves one that it possibly could be, which is this one. This shows what driver is currently on it. And then you have the green arrow. And then this shows what we want to place on it. And what we want is Win USB. You can click these arrows to choose different ones, but we don't want these. What we want is Win USB. So click Replace Driver. Okay, once it was installed successfully, we'll click Close. Uh, it it takes some time. Don't rush it. I'm whenever I edit this video, I'm I'm sure I just fast forwarded through that part, but it did take about a minute. Okay, now if we look down at Universal Serial Bus Devices we see uh, CP2102 USB to your bridge controller. But like I said, this is not what we want. We want it showing in ports common LPT. The only reason we use Zadig is just to help us find the flight controller because it could be 
it could have been in any of these tabs and that would just take forever to find so this just speeds speeds things up uh, so now we will right click and update driver software browse my computer for driver software let me pick from a list of device drivers on my computer and then uncheck show compatible hardware I will now scroll down and this only applies to you CP2102 guys. You virtual comp core guys, just hang on a second. Uh, you guys have it a little bit different. I will now click on Silicone Labs. And then what we want is the CP210X, not the 2102N. You want the X. So click Next. After it's changed the driver, click close. Now if we look back at ports common LPT, we now see it up here under you know 2110X USB to your bridge. And then it's placed mine on COM3. It might have given you a different COM number, that is perfectly fine. The COM number doesn't matter as long as you have a COM, COM number. So now if we go into beta flight, I can click this box up here and click COM3 and then connect and it lets me connect. Now if it's uh, saying that it was unable to, uh, if you're getting a message box right here and no tabs on the side, then that means you are you probably have a new flight controller and it has clean flight firmware on it. So at this point, you would just have to go to firmware flasher and flash new firmware. If you don't know how to do that, then watch my video on how to flash firmware. Look in the description below for a link to my beta flight playlist and you'll find that video in that playlist. Okay, now we're done with that. Let's move on to the F3 boards that use a virtual COM port. This is going to be like the Omnibus F3, uh, the uh, Seriously Pro Racing Mini, Seriously Pro Racing Evo, and a few others. Uh, so if I click COM, I'm not getting any COM numbers, and it's not going to let me connect under COM1. It says it's successfully open, but it, it, that's not right. Now with you virtual COM port guys, you actually have two different drivers. You have one driver for when you just plug in your USB cable, and then you have a different driver for, for when you uh, enter the bootloader mode by jumping the boot pads and then plugging in the USB cable. If you're not sure how to get into the bootloader mode, then once again watch my video on how to flash firmware. So assuming everyone knows how to get into their bootloader, I will now uh, jump the pads on my flight controller, and, or press the button, some have buttons, and then plug in the USB and now I'm in the bootloader and uh, under the bootloader you will never see it under common LPT in fact you don't want it here you want it to be in universal serial bus devices if you uh, if it's not showing up here then once again the easy way to find it is to go into Zadig uh, options list all devices then click the drop-down box find your flight controller and you want to flash win USB once you flash Win USB, then uh, that's it. It should now be showing up under Universal Serial Bus Devices, and here it is right here, SCM32 Bootloader. Now it can go one of two ways. Uh, instead of changing, unplugging the USB cable and then plugging it back in, but this time not in the USB, instead of doing that first, what I would recommend doing is going into uh, Betaflight and trying to flash firmware and for you virtual COM port guys you should be seeing DFU at the top of your screen under the port so if I choose my firmware and then flash it okay it's done and it will it should automatically leave the bootloader mode but just in case unplug your USB cable and then plug it back in this time not in the bootloader and then click up here in the com and for some of you it may automatically find the driver that you need some of you it won't if you have a com other than com1 then you try to connect if it connects great for you for those of you that it's still not working then this is what we will do like i said um not in the bootloader this time let's go back to zadig find the flight controller again and flash win USB again, which I've already done here. After you flash win USB, then look in Universal Serial Bus Devices, and it's popping up as STM32 Virtual COM port. But once again, with the USB plugged in and not in the bootloader, we want it to be in COM and LPT. 
So right click, update driver software, browse my computer for driver software, let me pick from a list, uncheck show compatible hardware, and then uh, for some of you, at least for me, this is where things get confusing and I know I can't make this video apply to everyone and everyone's computers because every computer is different everyone has different names of drivers but for me what I do is look in Microsoft and then USB serial device but once again it might be placed under somewhere else for you you will just have to look around you can click on these and I mean I, I really can't give you any more ad advice other than that because I, I don't I only have one computer so for me it's Microsoft and then USB serial device so I'll click that and then click next it's finished installing the driver click close and now under ports common LPT I'm seeing it as USB serial device COM5 so if I go into Betaflight and I make sure I pick COM5 and then connect it lets me connect. Okay, now moving on to the F4 boards with the virtual COM port. So if I, uh, it's showing up as COM7. If I try to connect, it failed. This part is just like the F3 uh, virtual COM port boards. We want to enter the bootloader, uh, jump the boot pads, and then plug in your USB cable to get into the bootloader. Then we will go into Zadig, find your flight controller, and flash Win USB just like the two other boards. Once you've done that, then look in Universal Serial Bus Devices, and here it is under SEM32 Bootloader. So still in the bootloader, I will go into Betaflight and flash firmware, because like I said, sometimes Betaflight will automatically find the driver that you need. So I will pick my flight controller and flash firmware. Uh, like I said, once again, you want to see DFU up here. That's how you know you're in the bootloader. And you have the correct driver for the bootloader. Which you should have the correct driver as long as you flash the WinUSB in Zadig. And then if you, you know, actually were in the bootloader when you flash that, then you will see DFU. Okay, it automatically left the bootloader for me because I no longer see DFU at the top of the screen, but just in case, I will. Uh, disconnect the USB cable and then reconnect it. Let's try to connect and it did not automatically find the driver that I need. So I will go back into Zadig again. Like I said this time we are not in the bootloader. I just plugged in the USB cable and find the flight controller and then flash win USB once again. Okay, fast forwarding, it installed the driver. So now if we look under Universal Serial Bus Devices, I will right click on my flight controller, update driver software, browse my computer for driver software, let me pick from a list, uncheck show compatible hardware, and once again every computer is different, but for me, let's see, I'm finding my Omnibus F4 driver under STM Microelectronics, but like I said, you will probably have to go through here and find your flight controller. Okay, fast forwarding, I just looked through all of these and I can't find it, so what I'm going to do is just pick the Omnibus F4. Uh, this isn't going to be different firmware or anything like that, it's going to be the same driver, so click next. Just real quick, guys, um, you're probably not going to see Omnibus as a driver unless you have used an Omnibus uh, because I own Omnibus flight controllers that is the driver that I have to use for all of my F4 boards but the whole goal here is just to pick something that makes it show up under the ports common LPT under a common number that's all you need so regardless of the name just pick something that works it installed the driver click close if I look in ports common LPT even though I'm not using an Omnibus F4 flight controller it's showing up as Omnibus F4 COM7, which is all we want. We just want to assign it a COM number. So if I go to Betaflight and try to connect on COM7, it lets me connect. 
And that's pretty much it, guys. So if this video helped you out, please give me a like. Uh, look in the description below for links to other playlists and other videos. Uh, thanks for watching, and I will see you again soon.